Thanks very much for joining us, uh, Mr. Franco. You know, let's begin with what the RBI has said. It has asked the banks to keep a bigger buffer in case where it is giving loans, unsecured loans in particular, to uh, personal borrowers. Why do you think this is being done? Is it to slow down the credit offtake? Is it in order to be able to manage the liabilities that are there so far? What could be the reason? See, uh, I'm glad that RBA has woken up, but uh, this indication has been there for quite some time. The loans which are increasing is the personal loans. Yes. To some extent, MSME loans. And large credits are given to the non-banking financial companies. So now RBA has said that you should keep a better buffer for the personal loans and also for the non-banking financial company loans. Yes. There was a time non-banking financial companies were not given finance with the principle that the bank should not lend for on lending to somebody else. Right. They should lend it directly. But now that has been given up and almost uh, one third of the loans in the market is given by the banks to the non-banking financial companies at a cheaper rate and they are giving it at a very high rate, 36%, 40% and that is affecting the people as a whole and these are the loans which are not likely to come back also. Why do you say that they are not likely to come back? See, the economy is not doing well, though some of the claims show that we are doing very well. And all. In fact, just today we have the Q2 GDP data, which paints a rather positive picture on many fronts. Yes, that is because some time back they have changed the criteria of collecting the data and certain data they don't allow to be collected. Right. Like the National Sample Survey data, they have not disclosed it when it was done last time because it was not... Uh, satisfactory for them. You mean the consumption data? Yes. Yes. So now the personal loans, if you look at the figures, that is alarming. Uh, the just uh, an analysis within four years, which Mr. Subhash Chandra Garg, former economic affairs secretary, who was also a finance secretary, yes, has uh, he has written an, an article which shows that in four years, it has increased from 23 lakh crores to 48 lakh crores. Right. Just in four years. Right. More than doubled. This is your outstanding personal loans. Yes. Right. And out of this, what is more dangerous is the unsecured loans, for which there is no collateral, there is nothing to fall back for the bank. That has increased from 7.4 crores to 16 lakh crores. Right. Just this, over 16 lakh crores. Yes. yes. This can go bad. As I said, the economy is not doing well. The non-banking financial companies, they give without any proper assessment. And when the people are not able to earn money to repay, they will default. Same thing will happen with the personal loans. And the huge interest rate adds to the burden right. and the tendency to default increases. Right. So this is the danger, one of the dangers which are... Now, these unsecured personal loans, the RBI has actually exempted a lot of loans. Your home loan, your car loan, your loan taken against gold or gold jewellery. All of this will not be uh, under the higher buffer rate. It is only for the loans which have absolutely no collateral. Yes. Which means somebody which needs money. Which is what money. is called the unsecured loans. Would something like a government scheme like Mudra also be under a higher uh, level of scrutiny now after this? Already there has been a scrutiny. Recently the finance minister herself had a meeting with the uh, managing directors and chairmen of the bank to have a look at the, in the presence of RBI, to have a look at the, the MSME loans together. Right. And Mudra loans in particular because the number of uh, mudra loans which 
the banks have given in the last seven years, it is of uh, disproportionate scale. I think you have some figures for that. Yes, 44 lakh, uh, sorry, 44 crore beneficiaries mm -hmm. accounts, 44 crore customers have been given a loan. The uh, loan outstanding is 24 lakh crores, which is very huge in the last seven years. Now, if we compare the number of loans with the number of households, mm -hmm. as per the 2011 census data, after that no census has been done, the number of households in the country is 24 crores. Right. So if we have given 44 crore loans, so almost every household two people would have got the loan. Almost, that's right. Where is that loan? How we are we seeing so many enterprises flourishing in the country? Well, because the enterprise survey is an, the industry survey is another survey I think which has not been conducted. Yes. So we don't really know. Yes, they keep looking at the figures of that Udyog portal. There is compulsorily everybody, everybody has to register yes. if they start a small enterprise, and that is taken as a data. But that enterprise may not be surviving. We have seen that in the case of mudra loans, quite a number of borrowers, they are not able to run that business and it closes down very quickly. The loan amount is also small, 50,000. That's right. 5 lakhs, maximum is 10 lakhs. So somebody who's taking a 50,000 rupee loan, one can safely assume that this is a home-based enterprise, right? And so unless the government does a census or a survey, we'll not really know how many of them survived or did well or did not uh, manage to, uh, you know, do what they took the loan for. Yes, urgently there is a need for a survey to find out the reality. How many of these enterprises are surviving? If they have not survived, why they have not survived? Then only you can bring a solution. As to why they needed the loan? Yes. So now tell me why are personal, why is the RBI so keen to control the, you know, the, the giving out of personal loans? Is it that the banks have been careless or is it that it feels that there's a larger risk to the economy? What could be the... It is because there is a larger risk to the economy. Banks have not been careless. Banks have sufficient deposits, so they have to give loan. And it is the same RBI which has been compelling banks to give loans to the non-banking financial companies. Right. They have not put any restriction on personal loan earlier. Right. Whereas there are some banks which still have a criteria that unless your salary is credited to your account in that particular bank branch, they are not entitled for a personal loan. That is a secure loan. Salary is attached to that. Right. But what I called the unsecured loans, there is no such kind of a tie-up with the bank. It's like you go on an app and take something? Yes, now the app-based loans are also given. You don't have to go to even the bank. The public sector banks, private sector banks have also introduced that scheme. You know, Mr. Franco, why I'm asking you questions related to this again and again is because there are two ways of looking at it. One is that, you know, there's this huge unleashing of entrepreneurial spirit. And the other is that, well, people don't have enough money to manage their day-to-day -day expenses, whether for the enterprise or even for the home, and that's why they're taking the loan. How do we clearly assess what is going on in the absence of consumption data, in the absence of industrial survey? Uh, so is it really, are we shooting in the dark? Are we forced to shoot in the dark? We are shooting in the dark because we have not cre created an atmosphere for the enterprises to grow. If the enterprises have to flourish, you have to create an atmosphere. You have to help them in marketing. I'll just compare it with Israel. I had been there for a training and when I questioned a resource person who was sharing the enterprises, the startups which are increasing in Israel, it is known as the startup nation. Okay. So. I said that, see, I'm a banker, I'm very 
worried when I have to give a loan to a new enterprise. So here, how do you get the money? She said that there is no need for the bank to give loan. If you have a good proposal, the government gives the money for starting up enterprise. Mm -hmm. Then subsequently, you have established it and you want to grow, it gives loan at 2%. Okay. Once it is established well and survived in the market, bank goes to the person, says that you expand, we will give you loan. Is but this... here we don't have that. We do have some money as seed money, which is very meager. Most of the people do not have access to that. So the enterprises are not able to survive. Is this something like the ECLGS scheme where the government during the COVID lockdown actually gave, uh, uh, you know, asked people to take these loans? And, and, you know, what has been the repayment pattern over there? Because the government there actually built into the scheme the whole idea that about 2.5 lakh crore would be written off it's as a first off, uh, you know, sort of write-off. Was Is this comparable with what you saw in Israel? No. This was a short-term measure. When the economy was in crisis, COVID, uh, you know that the enterprises yes. could not uh, run. That time it was given as a short-time credit and that too, the MSME representatives, they keep accusing the government that you allowed this finance to go to enterprises which were already doing well. You were not giving this to the real people who were get really into a crisis. So account which is standard and doing, the, doing well, they were given that assistance. That was a temporary assistance. In the Israel's instance, what I'm saying is, to encourage new enterprises to flourish, the government takes a risk. China, they ask the development banks to fund these enterprises. New enterprises, let it come back. Universally, there is a study which says that across the world, new enterprises, only 10 to 15 percent, they survive. Right. So the rest, how you have to take care? The Chinese banks are given funds that, okay, even if 15% survive, it creates employment that is good for the economy. The rest which is not surviving, we will take care, we will write down. Okay, so let's move from the personal loan and the MSME loan segment to the, so, so one of the things that is mentioned in the article by Subhash Chandigar, the former finance secretary, is that, you know, the loans to the large enterprises, as well as to the infrastructure sector, those are actually not as big a share of the loans that the banks are providing. What is happening there? See, uh, number one, there was a lot of loans given to the infrastructure by the banks. There was a credit mismatch right. in the sense the deposits which you are taking is for a short term. Maximum is five years. Whereas the long-term credit, it is 9 years, 10 years, 12 years. So there is a mismatch. And this large enterprises, road construction, port, energy, electricity, the repayment was not coming. Right. So the banks have reduced lending to them. They have become a little more careful. Cautious. Because you know about the RBI recommending 12 big loans to the National Company Law Tribunal. Right. It had uh, Ocean Steel, Ocean Power, SR Steel, SR Power, Anil Ambani Swan Group. So like that, huge credit was given for infrastructure, telecom too, and that was not coming. So the banks have become little careful. But in spite of that, banks have given quite a number, lot of uh, large credit. In fact, 2017, RBI issued a circular. It uh, gave a notification that by 2000, mm -hmm. no corporate should be given loan more than 10,000 crores. Okay. They clearly explained that the NPA is increasing. Mm -hmm. If you are doing well, you can go to the market, mm -hmm. bond market security market, share market, there you Raise get your funds. funds. Right. 
banks should not lend more than 10,000 crores as a consortium to one corporate. But that has not been implemented. So because of that, maybe today's the outstanding of Mr. Adani's group will be more than 2 lakh crores. Such kind of weak credits are given. Once they go bad, they affect the economy. We can't predict that these enterprises will always do well. That dangers can suddenly come. We have seen in the 2008 crisis, 2000, uh, Asian uh, financial, financial crisis. crisis, that nobody was predicting that something is going to happen. But suddenly, collapse comes. So, that way, in my understanding, the large credit, the infrastructure credit should be given by the development financial institutions. This government has killed, the, not only this government, even before that, they started killing them, they converted them into commercial banks. So, all the commercial banks have been forced to give long-term loans. So, this large credit can always lead to a crisis if even one industry goes bad. Basically, because the total number of large borrowers is small, but the total figure of the loans they have is very, very large. Yes. So, even one or two enterprises falling back on their payments means that the it can send a ripple through the banking yes. system. Yes. RBI data shows that 15,340 borrowers have been given loans above 100 crores. Okay. Which the credit is uh, 7 lakh crores and the outstanding is 4.5 lakh crores, which is huge. So, even if one enterprise with an outstanding credit of 1000 crores goes bad, it will affect the balance sheet of a smaller bank. That's right. Except State Bank of India, it has large <laughs> balance sheet, they can afford. But the other banks, they cannot. So, what you are saying is that the risks of to the banking sector arise from both the large number of personal loans that have been given out, which the RBI seems to be now trying to control, as well as the fact that even though the credit offtake for the large enterprises is not growing at the same pace as earlier, but those old risks have not been dealt with yet. So, what are the solutions? How does one go forward? No, one more factor is there. Right. See, this government had been forcing banks to give large number of mudra loans. Now, as per the September data of 2023, RBA data, there are more than 44 crore customers given loan under the mudra loan scheme. Okay. Shishu, Kishore, Darun, three schemes are there. The outstanding, the loan given was little more than 24 lakh crores. Mm -hmm. And many of these enterprises are not surviving. So there also the, the MSME uh, NPA, which Mr. Garg had mentioned, yes. mainly it is attributed to the mudra loans. Okay. And the 44 crore people, if we have financed, there should have been, like once upon a time when there was a scheme like IRDP, Integrated Rural Development Program, people used to say that the number of cows financed by the bank, if they are there, there won't be any place for people to walk. Okay. So in our country with 24 crore households, if 44 crore people have got this uh, mudra loan, everywhere you should be seeing uh, enterprises flourishing, which is not happening. So there again, the default is increasing. And, so and that is also going to, it is an indicator that it can lead to a crisis. So even the middle you're saying is at risk, not only the top and, and the bottom, but even at the middle of the, the small borrowers, the individual personal borrowers, as well as the large enterprise borrowers, all three things are where the government needs to pay greater attention to what's happening. Definitely. The government has to pay attention. The RBI has to have closer scrutiny. And banks themselves have to wake up. They should clearly analyze where they are going. Are you seeing this based on the NPA data? Is this because we know already that the rate at which people are hoping that their loans will be written off 
and then later become NPAs is increasing? Yes. Uh, see, in the case of mudra loans, the political party representatives themselves are telling people that this is given by the Prime Minister. Right. So, even if you don't pay, nothing will happen. So, people tend to not to repay. Only thing they don't know that their name has already been entered in the civil. So, if they don't repay tomorrow, mm -hmm. they will get into a problem. They will not get a fresh loan. And it's not just that. Now you have a whole host of legal uh, problems which can hit you if you do not repay. You have not just civil, you have the Surface Act, you have, you know, you know, the deposit, you know, any borrower is going to be liable to a certain extent. And then you also have this entire hordes of people who collect loans from individuals, right? If they don't repay, they could be in other kinds of trouble, legal or not. Yes. See, especially the loans which are given by the non-banking financial companies. And also now the banks have been allowed to have co-lending model in which the bank is giving the loan. 85% mm -hmm. of the loan is given by the bank, but it is a non-banking financial company like Adani Capital who will identify the borrower and uh, disperse the loan. Right. And if it is not coming back, who is going to be responsible? You tell me, what is the legal uh, framework for that? See, now for that, we really don't have any legal framework. The only is the Sarfasi Act, which you are saying. That recovery tribunal, it is for higher loans. That's right. NCLT is for more than 10 crores. That's right. But the Sarfasi Act can be used against any borrower. No, but we see so many reports and it's very concerning that, you know, there are these people who have borrowed and then they get these calls and they are harassed, some app, you know, they have used which they have borrowed money from. And then, you know, th th there have been suicides as well over these small loans which people take. Uh, so the risk to society might be much bigger if no legal structure is in place for both lending and returning the money after borrowing. Yes. That danger is very visible. Lot of loans apps have come. Right. They offer you loan without any collateral. Right. And people, when they are need of, in need of money, without looking at anything else, they just uh, apply through the app. Right. And the apps have uh, very dangerous provisions. Like there is a very detailed report by BBC, which shows that uh, once you log into that app, they get access to all your contacts. Right. So they use that contacts to pressurize for recovery of the loan. Right. And that is what has led to many suicides, not right. only one suicide. Right. In Tamil Nadu itself, the DGP of the police had to give a public statement that please don't get into these apps, don't loan up. Same thing happened at a larger scale in Gujarat. The DGP Gujarat had to come and tell the public not to use. But this should have been controlled earlier itself by the Reserve Bank of India. How do you allow people to have access to the bank data because of the UPA platform? And that is used to get all the details of the borrower. And that has led to this problem. And we do not have a real uh, legal mechanism to monitor this kind of misuse. All right. You just download an app and do something yourself. Yes. Gundas are being used. Yes. They go and threaten at home. They phone up and uh, talk in such abusive languages. Right. right. Ladies have committed suicide because of the language which was used against them. Right. So, so what you're saying, so let's come to the quickly to these solutions part, you know, earlier the NPAs in the in the banking sector came from the very, you know, sort of a loan party, which was held, uh, you know, about a decade earlier. Now you're saying it's the opposite, the loan party is happening, but it's happening at the bottom at the middle level at, for the small borrowers. So how does one how does the RBI approach it? What should the government do? See, uh, number one, 
the small borrowers should be given credit by the banks, not by the non-banking financial companies. They should be eligible for cheaper credit, not the corporates who are now able to get 4%, 5% rate of interest. Housing loan, you are paying a huge interest. That's Education right. Education loan, you are paying a huge interest. So the small loans, if it is given by the banks, especially by the public sector bank, it can create a demand in the economy also, and it can really help the people. That is not happening. Once you are giving through the NPFCs, it is huge interest rate and all kind of harassment. And the NBFCs also don't have to follow the same capital requirements that a bank has. They do have a capital requirement, but it is a diluted one. Right. So most of them are dependent on banks to for the funds. They don't have their capital to lend. Right. And uh, most of them are not allowed to collect deposits also. Right. So they depend only on the mainstream banking system to right. get. And just uh, they have become like brokers. Mm -hmm money lenders only. So this is one thing which has to be done. Secondly, the personal loans. Personal loans should be encouraged for, with security, like the housing loan. And for that, the interest rate should be lesser, at least for smaller houses, like somebody is taking a house uh, for, uh, for 20 lakh loan. He should be given a concessional rate. Larger loan of one crore, two crores, you charge more, no harm. But it's a secure loan. There, it can help the economy because it creates employment, right. steel, cement, all kind of uh, necessities are used for the house construction. So it helps the economy. But Instead of that, if you are giving large corporate loans, that is not going to create employment. The third thing is that uh, the long-term finance, that has to be addressed by the development financial institution. Now they have started one, but not uh, operating very well so far. We need more development financial institution, especially, say, large credit for uh, uh, food processing. Let there be a separate uh, bank. MSME should be right. the original role it is not playing. Right. IDBA was, was converted into a bank. So that uh, place has to be occupied by another development financial institution. Housing. HGFC was for a house, housing finance alone, right. conducted to, to, to the bank. Right. Now both are merged also. So right. it's a, a normal commercial bank. So who is going to take care of the housing demands? You require a development financial industry because that, those loans are for 15 years, 20 years. Even the commercial banks are giving that because there the security is so strong. The house is there. But then... For the MSM is, you have to create an atmosphere. Adequate support has to be given, subsidized credit needs to be given, subsidies need to be given, infrastructure support has to be given, concessional rate of electricity should be given. Then only the MSMEs can flourish. The entire ecosystem. Yes. And that can create much more uh, employment. So okay. that is one. Finally, uh, the interest rate which is being used in the country, it was controlled by RBI earlier. Now they have left it to the freedom of the banks. So unless that control is brought in, mm -hmm. today you are giving lesser interest for the depositors. It is the depositors whose money is being lent and without that, banks cannot survive. Right. If one fine day every depositor decides that there is no adequate income and uh, this bank may give back me money, it may not. If that faith in the system is getting reduced, it got reduced by the demonetization. Mm -hmm. Further, it got reduced during the introduction of the FRDA bill, Financial Resolution and Deposit Insurance right. Bill. People started withdrawing. Like that, if uh, with some of these 
articles coming if people lose the faith in the system and start withdrawing then the system can collapse we were giving at one point of time 16% interest that did not affect the bank that time so why not we keep small depositors higher rate of interest and use that money for appropriate purposes which is the priority right now priority sector itself has been reduced right. to a margin the government's role the rbi role should be to build up the economy for which you have to channelize credit that was the original purpose of nationalization now everything is free which is what mr garg's article also points out exactly. that you're not channeling credit you are giving personal loans and that might not be very good very healthy for the economy in the longer run yes all right uh, mr so, franco thanks very much for joining us thank you very much